there is zero demand for electric vehicles among the consumers. That has been part of the mainstay of the legacy automakers' argument against electrification for the better part of two decades. Now, however, the demand for electric vehicles in Europe is exploding, and the German automakers are finding themselves woefully unprepared to meet the demand. Welcome to a new video on Tesla Vibes, and today, we'll see everything you need to know about Tesla's rising demand in Europe. The demand for electric cars has skyrocketed in recent years, and Tesla is one of the manufacturers looking to meet the demand for these cars. But what is the reason why the demand for electric cars has soared? If you're watching us for the first time, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you can enjoy our future videos while getting updated. The European Union's fast charging infrastructure appears to be inadequate for the expected influx of electric vehicles. Tesla currently has nearly 5,000 superchargers in 24 European countries, whereas the Ionity Consortium only has 1,160 chargers so far, according to the European Commission. Tesla, which, of course, has never bought into the self-defeating no-demand argument, has been rapidly expanding its production capacity and charging infrastructure, and now it is preparing to open a factory in the German's backyard, according to the Wall Street Journal. Because it's baseball season, let's borrow a cliche from the United States of America and say that the Red Sox are going to have to play some serious catch-up baseball. As it happens, Europe, with the exception of a couple hot spots, namely Norway and the Netherlands, lagged far behind the United States in terms of electric vehicle adoption a few years ago, up until about the end of 2016. That dynamic is now being reversed, and Europe is quickly emerging as the global leader in the electric vehicle industry. A large part of the increase in demand for electric vehicles can be attributed to government policy. EU emissions regulations are forcing automakers to develop electric vehicles, and purchase incentives are encouraging drivers to purchase them. In addition to Germany, Austria, France, Spain, and the United Kingdom are all offering substantial incentives for electric vehicles, with the maximum EV subsidy now standing at $10,460. Whatever the driving force behind the sales increase, the results are undeniable. In June, plug-in vehicles had a market share of more than 8% in each of the three largest European auto markets. The German manufacturers are woefully unprepared to meet the growing demand. A new wave of electric vehicles is in the works, but it will be 6 to 18 months before the majority of them hit the roads. The launch of Volkswagen's flagship new electric vehicle, the ID3, has been delayed due to software issues. To be sure, increasing production of existing models such as the e-Golf, which has been in production since 2015, takes time and money. The automobile industry is experiencing bottlenecks, particularly in the area of battery cells. Roman Zitzelsberger, a member of Daimler's supervisory board, said in an interview with Der Spiegel, according to the magazine, buyers ordering new electric vehicles are facing wait times of up to a year and some German automakers have stopped taking new orders for some of their electric vehicles. It's ironic, but the problem the German giants are facing is reminiscent of the valley of death that Tesla experienced with the Model S, and later with the Model 3. The companies have invested billions of euros in developing their new electric vehicles, but if they can't bring their new vehicles to market quickly enough, the damage to their reputations, and ultimately to their bottom lines, could be catastrophic. Even the German automakers, who have always prided themselves on being at the forefront of automotive technology, must be perplexed by the fact that Renault's small and unattractive Zoe is currently the best-selling electric vehicle in Europe. To make matters worse, Tesla's Model 3 is outselling everything the Germans have to offer in a number of markets. Even in Germany, Volkswagen is barely holding on to the top spot. In the first half of 2020, the e-Golf sold 7,320 units, the Zoe was right behind it with 7,066 sales, and Tesla's Model 3 was closing in on it with 4,367 sales. Volkswagen's e-Golf is the best-selling electric vehicle in the world. So what exactly went wrong? Is it possible that the Germans are unable to discern which way the electric wind is blowing? No, there isn't a problem with that at all. They understand what they need to do, and Volkswagen, for example, is taking the right steps in the right direction. The company has converted its Zwickau factory entirely to electric vehicle production, and it has begun the process at its Emden plant. 
Daimler is constructing a number of battery factories in an effort to break the stronghold that Asian suppliers have on the industry and bring battery production to Europe. These companies are devoting what appear to be significant resources to electrification, but when compared to the scale of their internal combustion engine vehicle production, their electrical efforts are still insignificant. At all of the world's legacy automakers, the real problem is that they continue to believe that they will be able to make a gradual transition to electric vehicles over the course of several decades, while simultaneously selling large quantities of highly profitable gas-burning SUVs. Within each of the major auto manufacturers, there are pro- and anti-electric vehicle factions. In many ways, Marcus Duesman, the new CEO of Audi, appears to embody the contradiction. Duesman previously worked as an executive at BMW, where he was involved in the development of the company's i3 and i8 electric vehicles, which propelled BMW to the forefront of electric vehicle development. However, the company suffered financial losses on the i models, and after a change in leadership, the company effectively abandoned its electrification efforts. Its next generation of electric vehicles isn't expected to debut until 2021. During his time at Audi, Duesman was responsible for putting together the Artemis project, which brings together a diverse group of specialists from across the Volkswagen Group to work in a startup-like environment on the development of new electric and autonomous vehicle technologies. Audi, on the other hand, recently stated in an interview that internal combustion engines will be alive for a very long time, and that the company would continue to invest massively in the development of combustion engines. In an interview with Auto Motor und Sport, Ralph Brandstatter, the new head of the Volkswagen brand, made similar remarks, stating that the company would continue to offer internal combustion engine vehicles for a long time. We've always said that in the long run, we'd have different propulsionary varieties able to compete on equal footing. Auto dealers have also erected roadblocks to electrification, both in Europe and the United States. Volkswagen CEO Herbert Diess wanted to replace existing internal combustion engine versions with electric models, but dealers vetoed both plans, and the gas-powered versions of both cars remain on the road. After hearing about Tesla's proposed Berlin Gigafactory, according to Der Spiegel, Audi CEO Duesman burst out laughing, not in mockery, but in amazement at the audacity of the brash young challenger. Duesman is well aware that Tesla has a significant advantage in the software department. As far as networking and onboard networking are concerned, he recently stated, we are not yet on equal playing field with Tesla. Artemis' mission is centered on software and connectivity, and the Volkswagen Group has established a new unit called car.software.org to further this goal. Initially, none of us took Tesla seriously, Duesman said, but as time went on, we all came to respect him. As time went on, however, everyone became to regard him with reverence. After that, we were puzzled, and then we were shocked by what they had accomplished. And with that being said, it's time to end our video. Do you think Tesla will be able to fulfill this rising demand? Let us know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and stay tuned for more amazing videos like this. Until next time, thanks again for tuning in to Tesla Vibes. Take care.